So we want to look at an example of a function um, where, where this idea of a limit might be necessary. So we talked about the fact that for most of the functions we're used to, if you want to know what's going on for a function near a point, well, you just plug in that point. You see what value you get. Um, and for many functions, we are going to find that that is indeed how you evaluate limits, by simply direct substitution. You plug in the value and you, you get the result. Um, but that's not always uh, possible. And, and one of the places where limits become useful and interesting is that limits will let you look at what's going on with the function sort of at the boundaries of the domain for a function, right? Uh, we know that if I want to evaluate f of c, right, if I want to know the value of the function at a point, that point has to be in the domain, right? I have to be able to have a number. It, the number has to be in the domain before I can plug it in, okay? But if we look at a function like f of x equals sine x over x, well, the sine function is defined everywhere. X is defined everywhere, okay? But we're doing the quotient, and we know that you can't divide by zero, right? And so if we were going to look at the domain, right, Well, we might say something like this. We might say the, the domain of f, well, it's the set of all real numbers x, except x cannot equal to 0, right? So 0 is not an allowed value for this function. Nevertheless, if you take this function and you put it into um, your graphing calculator, you put it into a program um, like GeoGebra or one of these online graphing tools, right? You're going to get output that looks something like this, right? Um, probably a little better than this. Um, but you'll get output that looks something like this. And what you'll probably notice is that it actually draws right through the y-axis. The curve goes right through the y-axis. So despite the fact that at zero, right, along the axis, the function is undefined, You'll find that when you ask a computer to plot this function, it plots it just fine. Right? Um, what's really happening is, well, OK, the function isn't actually defined at 0. So actually, there's a hole in the graph at that point. right? So the function is not defined there. So if we're trying to graph it, we can't plot a point at x equal to 0. Um, but we can plot points for every x on either side of 0. right? No matter how close we get to 0, we can plug that thing in, right? So we can put in 0 0.1 or minus 0 0.1. We can put in 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.00000001. 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 we can plug that in. We can see what we get, right? The only thing we can't plug in is 0, right? So really, really, really tiny numbers are fine as long as you don't actually put in 0. And what you find if you start plugging in those values is that the closer x gets to 0, the closer f of x seems to be getting to 1, okay? And this is where, this is the idea of a limit, right? This is what limits are telling you, right? Uh, in the textbook, you can find a table of values that illustrates that, right? So um, by looking at either from the graph, if you ask the computer to plot it, um, or from a table, you find that if, you know, we could say it this way, if x is close to 0, then f of x is, is, is approximately 1. It's going to be, you know, probably slightly less than 1 um, for values of x on either side. You're going to find that you're going to get like, you know, 0 0.99 something if x is really close to 0, right? Uh, but this, this is very imprecise language to say, well, if x is roughly 0, then f of x is roughly 1, right? This is, this is not exactly what you want to say. Um, when, you, when you state this in terms of a limit, you're, you're saying something a little bit stronger, right? So when you say that the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x, when you say that that limit is 1, well, you are saying this, but you're saying a little bit more. What you're saying is not only is this close to 1 when x is close to 0, but the closer x gets to 0, the closer this will get to 1, right? So as you, as you move in, right, as if you start here and you start moving in, as you shrink that gap, the gap between the y values in the function and, and 1, those are going to get smaller, right? So if I have, a, if I have an x value here, 
right? It's there. Y value is there, right? And, and the idea is that as you start, if you slide this in, get it closer and closer to the Y axis, as you bring this in, the Y value is going to come up closer and closer and closer to one, right? Um, but we never actually quite reach one because X can't actually equal zero, right? So X doesn't actually ever reach zero, so F of X doesn't ever reach one, right? But that's okay. Uh, that's exactly what limits are for. Limits are exactly this tool when you want to say that X is getting arbitrarily close to zero, but it's not actually hitting zero. Then, then you use limits. It's the correct language for exactly this scenario. Uh, 